Hello YouTube, I thought I'd do a quick little video of um, how to do some 4-axis movement with uh, Fusion 360. And this video is um, in reference to uh, another great YouTuber, uh, New York CYNC. It, um, if you haven't seen a lot of his videos, you really need to watch them. Um, they are very informative. He goes through so much stuff. Um, in one of his videos about 4-axis, it shows about um, doing pocket cuts and surfacing and, you know, slicing surfaces. And it's kind of a workaround to really do a four axis movement, um, using a five axis machine. And well, I, we all kind of know, um, it kind of, it kind of gets difficult in some cases. And this is probably not going to leave the best, um, surface finish. So I'm going to show you an easier way, a workaround to do that with um, tools we already have and some of the latest versions of uh, Fusion 360. So if we go back to Fusion, um, I have just a, a simple cylinder drawn here. <clears throat> I've already went through the setup and done the stock. Um, if you don't know how to do that, <clears throat> again, I suggest you go back and watch John. Um, he explains a lot of this in his videos, hours and hours worth. <clears throat> so after the setups um, set up, we're simply going to go to uh, multi-axis. We're going to go to flow. I've already, uh, we'll set a tool up. In my case, I'm using the pocket NC. And we're going to use a uh, flat end mill. <clears throat> I've already got my speeds and stuff. We'll do the shaft. Um, the geometry, we're going to cut this. Now this is very important when you click on flow. You see this little arrow come up. And normally um, with some of these um, smart settings and stuff, we kind of leave it where it's at and see how it goes. But in this case, um, make sure this arrow is perpendicular to your cylinder. And make sure your tool orientation, the Z, is along the cylinder. Um, of course, this point and everything is going to really matter to your machine setup and <clears throat> Later on, this point would be moved for me to like put put it on the pocket and see. Um, heights, it's really not going to matter too much, not at this point. Um, the passes, we're going to make several passes along this. Let's just call it, I don't know, let's just say 100. I'll explain what both ways does right after we uh, generate the toolpath. We're definitely going to use multi-axis. I'm going to leave it at 180 degrees so the tool will be flat. And watch. It's generating the toolpath. And here we have a very nice wrapped toolpath. And if we generate that with uh, our stock, This is um, a motion we more likely to see on a fourth axis machine, other than this step over. But this is gonna leave a much better um, um, surface finish that we're used to, almost like um, a lathe machine. Um, if you notice the way this is cutting, this is gonna be, if our tool's going, um, Clockwise, this is going to be a uh, climb cut, which usually gives a better surface finish. If you wanted to go the other way, what I figured out so far, one way is going to be climb cut, and other way, it's going to go the technically the other way, and that's going to give you a conventional cut. Generating toolpath. <clears throat> and you see that'll be going the other direction. I haven't been able to figure out yet how to tell it what side to start on. And if you do try to tell it by entry positions, things get really weird. So I'll let you guys uh, play with that one. But um, one of the best things about this toolpath <clears throat> is that you don't have to stick with a cylinder. You can do with um, other shapes. You can uh, 
you can do a typer. Um, in this case, <clears throat> I kind of went by um, John's example, and I'll highlight some of these. I went into the um, patch environment, and I made some offset surfaces. And I made each one of them like, uh, I think, millimeter, two millimeters. And then I extended the um, body and used it to uh, cut all the excess off. He explains some of that in your videos, or I can explain that in a later video. But I use that to create um, several toolpaths to kind of give it a step down feature. So if we simulate that, and I'll put this pretty fast, we almost get um, a, a step down feature. So I'm just removing so much material each pass. In this case, um, I think it was a millimeter, two millimeters, not really sure. And the tool staying uh, perpendicular to the tapered surface. And I'll skip along to the end. And we'll let the uh, computer catch up. <laughs> I'm kind of slow today. But um, there we have it cut on a taper. It does a really good job. It shows some nicks and stuff, but I don't think that's on a show through. Um, one interesting thing I found out doing this is while you're doing this, you have to make sure that your Z is lined up with the cylinder. If not, you'll get some really wild um, retracts that will go through your part. Um, that's never good. <clears throat> and you can take this on to more complicated shapes. I've even done it on, this is a uh, forever spin I just modeled up to show how you can use a ball and mill and get about the same really good surface results. We don't want to go through all that, so I'll skip all that. <clears throat> well, this is just roughing out material. This is what I would have to do, like on a pocket and see. I probably wouldn't come from the top, I would come from the sides, but um, you guys get it. But, um, this is going through the toolpath, and this is the flow again. And it works out really well. Um, there are other shapes you can do. Um, this is a like pocket NC setup. I thought about doing like a wine stopper or something. Um, of course, coming in from the from the sides, you know, clear your material out. And generally, we would have to do parallel passes or <clears throat> something of that nature, but the flow tool path does really, really well. I'll see if I can skip on to the end here, get to the good stuff. <clears throat> and there we go. <clears throat> if I slow things down, this is going to be a really nice tool path. In this case, you can see that the tool is kind of leading a little bit. And I did that in the settings. <clears throat> and for you um, Pocket NC users like me, you want to be careful with this because we know we can go, you know, so many degrees negative with the A axis, but 
you know, using a ball mill, you don't have to do that. So 90 degrees. And I use forward tilt to 15 degrees. That will keep the very tip of your ball in mill. We all know that's not a cutting surface. It'll keep the tip off of this part. Well, I hope that was um, eventful for you guys. And try to get used to this, um, this flow cutting path. It does a lot more than what people realize. Till the next video.